now let me just again define these very generic terms these are all genetic terms okay and they are kind of related to the broad mm -hmm. ideas i have been giving you about molecular biology in the first few lectures and genetics now so you already hopefully clearly understand the relationship about information on genes and the fact that functional entities here we are talking about proteins remember rna is also functional okay uh, and you basically this gene influences a uh, in the mendelian world one gene influences one trait okay in the modern genetics term one gene can influence multiple traits one gene can control uh, the length of your bones and also the same gene can control how intelligent you are or at least contribute to how intelligent you are so one gene can influence many many features and these are not necessarily morphological features they can be behavioral features also at the same time multiple genes can influence one trait and skin skin color your height are examples of where multiple genes in, uh, regulate um, uh, reg regulate the same trait okay so what i'm going to do in this slide is quickly define uh, certain terms used by a person called herman muller many years ago and i'll show you muller's face as the last slide of this talk okay so a gene makes a functional polypeptide which works to give you a phenotype okay now if the gene cannot make that functional polypeptide because of a mutation which interferes with its folding or inter interferes with the complete production of the folded functional polypeptide you get a very severe mutant phenotype and the severest mutant phenotype if so now i am going to use uh, arbitrary mathematics as i call it let us say now this is a little different from what i did yesterday but similar let us say that your phenotype is defined by 100 units 100 units of whatever we are talking about and let us assume that these 100 units are given by two alleles and 50 plus 50 gives you 100 fine now this is your wild type phenotype not everything is mathematical but it is the simplest way to explain it to you in the case of a very strong phenotype which we call as a null we define this as zero units basically there is no activity of the functional entity of the gene so both alleles are not contributing that's a null okay the word amorph is also used instead of a this looks like nuts it's not nuts it's null uh, we also use the term amorphic that is does not give morphology sometimes the allele maybe one allele functions the second isn't or both alleles are giving partial functions it gives you a milder phenotype this we called as a hypomorph these are all genetic terms but basically what you have to understand is the function is not 100 units but it is not zero units either so it is let us say in the range roughly speaking 10 units to 70 units so it's functioning but not efficient and the last thing which is sort of interesting is that if you have two alleles of a gene one allele gives you a protein okay the second allele has a mutation it also gives you a protein but this mutant protein is misbehaving and it misbehaves not only here it also influences the other normal protein and causes it to misbehave also this is called as a dominant negative allele in the sense that one allele not only doesn't contribute it chats to the other protein which is made by the other allele which is normal but somehow influences it not to function okay this is called a dominant negative allele fine so now here is here is a sort of a representation a homozygous a homozygous mutant tt okay can be zero because it's a null or it can be acting as a wild type which is either tt or it is tt both of these will act as wild types because here even 50 dose is enough to give you the wild type function okay if tt is both null you will have zero plus zero which is zero and you will have absolutely no function at all so you have an amorph which has no function you have a hypomorph which has partial function and you have an antimorph or a dominant negative in which one allele influences the other allele to not behave 
uh, in a wild type and uh, makes the phenotype worse is this clear so anti morph hyper morph and a morph are phenotypic terms this is what we see and what we are trying to understand from using the term 50 100 amount of activity is actually genotype fine excuse me sir yeah so in the last one is it uh, are there three alleles uh, like there are two uh, green parts shown so the wild type has like why is it three okay so there are cases in which a gene during dna replication there is a mistake and the gene duplicates if the gene duplicates okay. you have two copies of the same gene usually right next to each other in the genome this is not as often as you would think and in that kind of scenario you basically have double one gene giving you double the amount of protein okay that is called as a hypermorph okay so getting more activity so hypermorph anti morph hypermorph so can you explain hypermorph once more hypo yes sir okay let me try it in a different way so if this is an xy plot this is activity okay now one is a wild type so one is a wild type this is wild type and this is this is what the normal activity is if you see activity either here or here or here or here that is two that is a hypomorph that is activity less than 100 okay three is a here activity zero that is a amorph or a none zero activity and a hypermorph goes above 100 that is number 4 so if you have more activity than normal that will be a hypermorph sir in the hypermorph actually nothing is going to work no sir because this one no, is it's a hypermorph because it is giving you partial activity Yes, sir. But hypermorph will basically stop the functional one also to become dysfunctional, right? No, hypermorph is more than hundred activity. Antimorph will give you less than hundred activity because one allele is influencing the other allele. Okay. Sir, in evolution, when we say a gene is deleted, then it's just amorph, right? For that gene, if that entire locus is deleted, both alleles are deleted, the organism no longer has that gene. so even using the term amorph has no meaning because the gene doesn't exist right you can say between chimpanzees and humans gene number 4646 is no longer there fine right? but you don't yes, yes, use the amorph because we don't have it but if you go out in the sun and you have a mutation in both the alleles of your gene 4646 so that that gene is exists but doesn't produce functional protein you will call it an amorph in case of capital t and small t can we consider small t as amorph so this is a mendelian term right if you have gametes like this capital t and small t the small t we say is a null then it is a amorphic allele but it's not a amorphic gene because in the next in the plant it will be t and t right this plant we can't call a hypomorph even though 50% of the product is being formed because the plant shows exactly the same height as a tt so from a phenotypic view even though one allele is not functional you don't see a phenotype the animal is the plant is tall so we call it a normal wild type plant we don't call it a hypermorph if in non mendelian genetics a hybrid between a capital t and a small t gave you a plant which was between a tall and a dwarf somewhere over here we could have called it a hypermorph so sir in case of incomplete dominance this happens in case of incomplete dominance you are very right it is a hypermorphic feature okay sir activity of antimorph will also be zero unit it will be zero unit it can be zero units because one allele is trying to work it's like twins one twin wants to work the other twin says i don't want you to work so he will try and other twin from working okay and this means that the activity will be lower than it should be based on a single allele and that's an antimorph 
So could you please distinguish between antimorph and hypermorph? So in a hypermorph, so this is what we call as so-called normal activity. A wild type is this. A hypermorph is this. Fine. And an antimorph is when you have protein being produced by one allele. Let's call this allele X. And your other allele X prime is blocking the activity of this protein. So the actual activity will be low. That is a antimorph or a dominant negative. Is that clear? Okay, sir. Sir, what about when both the alleles are mutated in antimorph at the first case? No, no. Antimorph can only work when you have one allele which is functional and one allele which is stopping the other. Both uh, are sir. working, then it's a amorph. Okay. Sir, in the case of small t, small t, so you said that when it's capital T, small t, we say it's amorph because it's tall. There's no effect of the small t. Small t is not producing anything. That is one explanation, simplest explanation. Small t, small t is dysfunctional. Uh, but what if when small t, small t is producing some amount, but it's not the same as capital T, but uh, somewhere in between. Like if capital T is for red color, then small t, small t would be for pink color or something. Okay. You are uh, bringing uh, complicated things into the discussion. Let us say for a plant to be tall, there is a certain threshold of, let's say, T gene codes for a growth hormone. Okay. Let's say the small t, small t will giving you 10%, 10% activity. Fine. Together it is 20%. Now if this 20% is below a threshold, let's call the th threshold as 49%. And if you don't cross the threshold, you're not going to get a tall plant. So it's a, each allele is a hypomorph, but it is not contributing to a tall plant because the threshold has not been reached. So this is, now we are becoming a little complicated in our discussion. Uh, okay, so I understand. Okay.